What's up, podcast fans? This is a very special episode of the Million Pound Mission podcast, where you're going to get to listen in as I do a strategy session with one of my coaching clients for my Transformation Reboot program. The goal of each one of these strategy sessions is to help my client identify, analyze, and prepare ahead for their top transformation danger zones. If you think that you could benefit from a coaching session like this, you can head on over to millionpoundmission.com and check out all of the information on my Transformation Reboot membership. Now, let's dive into the episode. All right, Amy, welcome to your hot seat session. What would you like to focus on here this week? Uh, I guess um, a better food, a couple of things, better food plan. Um, I tried keto looking for the percentages and I wasn't... I was I was looking at the percentages, but not realizing I was eating it to burn body fat. So now I've kind of figured that out. So I need to um, follow, I guess, follow a plan that helps me eat the right foods. Does that makes sense. Okay. Not exactly. So what uh, are you saying that you want to try keto again, or you're going to try something different than keto? I want to try keto again. You tell me keto done right because I wasn't hitting, I was eating fats to eat fats to hit the numbers, but I wasn't full. I wasn't satisfied. Um, but I thought a lot about what I was eating and I was eating it just to hit the numbers, but I wasn't, I was still craving other things. Like I was playing, I was trying to play the system. I didn't, I wasn't learning it properly. So then I kind of went back to eating more carbs. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think as far as nutrition plans go, like what, what would you say is your number one goal right now? Like what would you be thrilled to achieve? Um, eating fewer carbs. No, but what does that produce? That's what I'm like. Uh, oh, why oh, do you um, want to eat fewer carbs? Like, are you yeah. trying to get stronger? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to lose body fat? Like what's the, the overall goal? Lose body fat, but I know it's through the, um, I would lose weight, but body fat would be number one. Okay. Okay. Um, so what have you been doing the last couple of weeks as far as nutrition? Uh, well, last week I was on vacation and got a lot of activity and um, did eat bad. I did have cereal. Like I know I shouldn't have it. Um, kind of looked at it as a treat. Um, got a lot of activity. And the week prior to that, I was on a business trip, um, had good protein foods, had the eggs, had the steak and the beef. I just had too much of it. I'm not good at, and I, and I only gained a pound, 1.4 pounds last week yeah, that's fine. on vacation. So that was surprisingly nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's more, not necessarily the weight, I guess I've gained a couple pounds in the past month, but it's more the behavior. Yeah. Cause I can always, uh, I can always work to out exercise the food, which is bad. It doesn't always work, but I, that's kind of like a crutch I would use. And I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. Okay. So that, that helps a lot. And like, I just did a workshop at the gym where I talked about different nutrition styles and just the amount of mental involvement and the amount of thinking and planning involved. And like you come from background of Weight Watchers, which is one of the lower levels of that mental intensity where, and where keto is like master's degree college, you know, like it's, cause there's a lot of planning, a lot of you have to weigh, you have to understand, you know, why you're hitting certain things. I think we just made that jump a little bit too quickly where um, it might be beneficial just to, like you said, focusing on, on eating good, clean foods, whole foods, you know, and just transitioning to learning about tracking calories and, and understanding macros and things like that. And then kind of stair-stepping things using a couple of our cycles to, to bridge that gap. And then if it makes sense, we, we jump back into keto uh, and, and we've got that bridge built. So, How's that sound so far as a, just a general game plan? It sounds great. And I realized how different when I stopped really being focused on keto because I was trying to hit, I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I was looking at percentages, not realizing, okay, the reason you're doing this is because you're burning body fat. Yeah. Not because Adam said you need to hit 75%. Right, right. <laughs> and I'm serious. I'm a numbers yeah. person like yeah. you. Like, well, yeah. you know, let me follow your lead. Let me do what yeah. you're telling me and I'll take care of things. Yeah, yeah. So... I've got, I mean, I'd love to see you just work through my clean eating plan for the next cycle. And, um, and it's going to be very similar to the first phase 
of keto done right. I mean, we could use that too. Uh, just that, that first phase of like the sugar detox phase, the first 14 days of keto done right. We could use that, um, which is more whole food focused, or we could take a step back and do my clean eating plan, which would allow for things like quinoa and, uh, you know, like wild rice and things like that. So it depends on, you know, where you, at what level of intensity you want to take it. Um, but again, we are not even thinking about ketosis. We're not, the go, that is not even a goal at this point. Um, it's more about clean eating, understanding your choices, uh, primarily focused on whole foods, getting adequate protein, things like that. Uh, so how is that sounding as far as there any, any confusion around that? Or is that saying like the right next step for you? It's a little confusing. Um, I really want to work on maybe not getting to 5% carbs, but I want to get into the habit of choosing foods other than carbs. Like you talked to someone, I don't know if it was a one-on-one about hidden carbs. Yeah. Like I find, I'd like to find a way to like avoid those, identify those and stay away from them. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, I feel like it's going to be like, we got to get rid of the mindset of 5% carbs, any percent carbs. Like not like, I feel like that was too intense of a jump from your Weight Watchers base into, into that. Um, and the proof of that is that we haven't really been, we haven't had a plan the last several weeks. That's it's just kind of, we've been kind of floating in the abyss and just being confused. Um, so by doing either the, the first phase of keto and right, where we're not stressing out about macros or the clean eating plan, where we don't even think about macros for a 20 day cycle. Like I think that that, like we won't think about lower than 5% carbs. Like we're not even worried about that at all. It's just, Day, day one plan, day two plan, making good choices within that. I think, you know, if your overall goal is losing body fat, losing weight, it'll happen. Um, but I feel like that's just the next bridge. Like, I think I feel like we just jumped on the staircase a couple of steps and then fell backwards uh, a little bit uh, uh, with, you know, the, the full on attempt to keto. Some people can do that sometimes it's just like, we just got to, you know, bridge that gap. It's, it's your experience with food choices is always different, you know, individually. So, um, like I think trying to focus on getting less than 5% carbs and all that at this point wouldn't be a great idea. Um, but you know, just focusing on the actual good choices, understanding like, okay, and we can still track your stuff, but we're not going to manipulate your diet based off of what my fitness pal says. If so, like the clean eating plan, the first phase of keto and right, we're just eating till you're satiated. Uh, we are, you know, we have the meals and snacks, you know, good to go. And we're eating those things. But then we have the data in the My Fitness Pal. And you can see like, okay, an avocado gave me 20 grams of carbs or an RX bar had, you know, 25 grams of carbs or I ate a banana and that was 15 grams of carbs. So, so you'll start to understand to where when we do bump into keto or doing that, you say, okay, I need to cut out bananas because that's too heavy of a carb source. It's not worth the carbs. Or if you had that like cauliflower crust pizza or something, like you'll start understanding like this equals that macro. Um, and that way you're better prepared down the road of, okay, quarter cup of almonds. That's going to, you know, give me six grams of protein, 18 grams of fat and four grams of carbs. And you'll understand that choice going into keto. So I feel like just educating you on those, you know, we're not going to stress out or manipulate our diet based on those things, but you'll start to understand that certain foods mean certain things. Or if you're like, well, I'm always really low on fat, you know, I'm eating, you know, you can eat salmon and grass fed beef and things like that. And you start to see the macros like, okay, that's got a lot of fat in or macadamia nuts. Um, that's where we're going to get our fat from when we bounce back into keto. So just kind of testing different things, different food sources, learning about it and low pressure. I think we'll still lose weight. Um, but I feel like there's still too much confusion around the macros to jump right back into that, especially coming off vacation or where we haven't had a real set plan. I think we could use kind of a, a, a re ramp up for 28 days and then bounce back in. So does that sound doable to you? Sure. So we're going to stick with clean eating this month. I would. Yeah. Uh, what would I find? Where would I find it on the site? I'll just email you all the, all the links. Okay, yeah. That way you've got that. And it's, awesome. it's good to go. It's, it's in there, but yeah, I need, I need to put the clean eating plan front and center a little bit on the, on the course a little bit better. So I'll, I'll work on doing that too, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just send you the, um, the level one plan, 
the, uh, it's got the recipe book. It's got, you know, the, some done for you meal prep stuff. So that I feel like that, and I don't want you to view this as like a demotion or anything like that. Like that's, that's not, you know, we always talk about the right tool for the right job. And that's every single month that we reset with our game plan. It's like, all right, what's the right tool for the right job this month? And that's the important decision that we have to make. And like I said, I feel like if we jump back into a point where you've been, had some confusion about in the past, I don't think that'll be, I feel like we could use a, that would potentially waste a cycle of just being confused for 28 days instead of kind of baby stepping in a little bit, still getting momentum, still losing weight and body fat, and then being a lot better prepared going into that next cycle. So I feel like, you know, as a coach, I feel like this is the right, the right play to, to draw up and, and, uh, and, and encourage you to do. So, um, yeah, I don't want you to feel like this is a setback. I feel like it's just, you know, the right adjustment. So. No, we just have to, I'm here, I'm doing it forever, you know, so it's not the next 30 days and I'm done. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. We've got, you know, we've got, you know, my job as a coach, I want to guide you towards uh, good decisions every 28 days. And I feel like, you know, and I, I tell people, I'll, I'll always tell you what you need to hear, which isn't always what you want to hear. You probably want to be like, yeah, let's go keto and it's it's all good. And, and let's talk macros and things like that. But uh, I just feel like we've, there's been enough confusion around the macros that it's it's going to be worth your time just to kind of baby step this and, and slow down the pace a little bit. And I feel like that's, uh, and we'll get good results this uh, with this cycle regardless. So okay. I think we'll be good. Now, uh, what about your workouts? Uh, what's the, for the next 28 day cycle, what are you thinking with your workout routine? I saw the, um, well, the, you're training the abs 2.0 mm-hmm. and I still like the accelerator 28. Um, those are the two that I will alternate. I said, I'm going to do five days a week on each of those. Cool. Um, and then I will do the treadmill. My knee isn't, my left knee isn't wonderful. So I'm going to go like fast paced, like three and a half miles rather than a four and a half, five okay. mile, you know, kind of thing. So I want to keep doing, I want to keep the habit. Yeah. The, the worry is that I step back and then I don't want to do it again. Yeah. So I'll do yeah. that five days a week. Yeah. Um, and, you know, listen to your body. You know, anytime yeah. knees, ankles, hips start acting up, I'm like, all right, running, walking, joint pounding stuff. We just have to be real mindful of and you know, just. And do, I have the hand weights that I'll use um, during the. Um, the videos and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's what I got. Um, yeah, that sounds, that sounds excellent, but just be mindful of your body. And you say you're going to do five days a week of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Sunday. I mean, if I can, if I do Sunday, I'll do Sunday, but generally that is my rest day. Yeah. It won't be today, but, um, yeah, cause I'll get back. But yeah, that's generally Sunday's my rest day, my meal prep day. Yeah. Good. Good. I like that. Uh, yeah. Make sure you have at least one good solid rest day in there. Uh, that's going to be important too, especially mm-hmm. if your body doesn't feel hundred percent. So if the knee's aching a little bit, you know, and it won't hurt to throw a little bit of ice on there, uh, you know, do, do a little, uh, extra, um, do you have a foam roller? No, I don't. Okay. That might be a good investment because a lot, especially yeah, if you're doing walking, running type of stuff, cyclists, your IT band will get really tight and that can cause a lot of knee pain. So um, I would look like, usually if you go to like a sporting goods store, they're going to be super expensive. But if you go to like Target or somewhere like that, they're going to, you should be able to find a good foam roller for like 25 bucks max. All right. I would not spend over 20, 25 bucks. Um, but it really... Uh, you know, doing your IT band, doing your, your, your quads, your hip flexors, glutes, that's going to help quite a bit with your recovery. And, um, you know, I, you can just push play on the, uh, the, uh, accelerate 28 videos and there you have it. So I'll mm-hmm. just follow right along with that. But yeah, I would, I would look at that as a potential investment or, you know, next time your, your birthday rolls around or somebody wants to do something nice for you, be like, give me a foam roller. Um, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Um, cool. Well, I think we've got a good game plan. I love how coachable you are. We got, you know, you were able to do business trip and vacation. We gained minimal weight. And like I said, you're super coachable. And I always appreciate that. And we'll take this next 28 days and we'll uh, ramp things up and just continue to accelerate the results. And got you back every step of the way. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're someone that has been sucked into that black hole of weight loss doom, where you lose that weight, you gain it back over and over and over again, I would love to help you out by providing you with some coaching, a rock solid monthly game plan, and I'm going to plug you into an amazing transformation tribe of like-minded people. Head on over to millionpoundmission.com and get all of the information on my transformation reboot membership. 
See you on the next episode.